and 01700. Here's a suggestion. If you have a question or a comment, perhaps you can get a pencil, piece of paper, write it down so that you're well organized. And when you get on the show, take as little time as possible so that we can accommodate as many of you as we can. We ask only, first of all, you respect yourselves and then respect others because we will not accept anything we're doing that's not within our broadcast standards. But we encourage you to always be forceful with your point. Thank you all again for joining us. Your voice in the community taught that get results. And uh, we can also follow this video streaming of this show on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel on Vaughn Radio. Thank you all again. Tonight, Conrad Naya Liebert, good evening. Good evening, Webo, and good evening to your hard-working staff here at Vaughn Radio, the powerhouse of the Eastern Caribbean. Um, to my colleague, Mr. Stanley, good evening, sir. And to everyone, Nivisions, home abroad, everyone in tune to this program, my friends in Connecticut, as usual, I'd like to say a special good evening to you guys. Well, but once again, we gathered to discuss the issues affecting the people. I suppose there are lots of issues affecting the people here in the Federation and globally. Um, of course, we are still in um, election season, and so um, I can see one of the parties still continue their, 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 their program of campaigning. Um, and the other, I'm not too sure what is up with them, but we are generally in that um, <coughs> election season. And so, Webo, of course, um, I'm so happy to be here once again to have a conversation with the people on various matters. Edric W. Stanley, good evening. Good evening, Webo. Good evening to my fellow panelists. <coughs> Good evening to the people of St. Kitts and more particularly the gracious people of Nevis. Those who listen to us on the World Wide Web and throughout the Caribbean Basin. Well, it is, of course, an obligation for me to be here as a result. First time <laughs> I caught different transport to get here. However, I'm here just to demonstrate clearly that it's an obligation for me to be here. So, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Webo. Okay, let's get on in the show. What we get? Well, I would first to begin with state that we have to congratulate the St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party for having done what they did in the last election on August 5th, which is a barometer by which the other parties will not include the CCM, but at the same time, the other parties in St. Kitts they must take a page out of the book of the Sinkitz Nevis Labour Party and to determine what they did and to use it as a barometer by which they should be measured. What I've observed is that they have more or less retooled, reshaped, reorganized and ultimately came back with a ban. And I must say that I do not know how much influence the former Prime Minister, the Honorable Denzel Douglas, had had on the party with reference to this last election. But obviously this comes as no surprise because we could remember back in maybe some 20 something years ago when they actually won eight seats that spelled volume at the time volumes this time they reorganized and came back and actually took the reins of government and it tells you people, parties, 
organizations, but more so political organizations, must look at the Labour Party's playbook and understand why they are so successful. The many ministers who won their seats, some are quite young enough to understand why they are among these people in the Labour Party. But at the same time, you still have to say congratulations to them. They did a good job by vanquishing the two opponents. United Labour Party, um, the People's Labour Party and the PAM. Webber. Um, Mr. Sally, I, I will partially agree with you. <coughs> I will join you in congratulating the um, the Labour Party and on that victory at the polls. Um, not totally unexpected, uh, Mr. Stanley. Um, they are the one that was not involved in the conflict. They and the, the NRP being existing political parties in the Federation. They, they was not part of the conflict. It was quite tactical of the Labour Party. And I don't think it really take university graduates to, to take that road of not weighing into the issues that led to the, de the demise of the um, of the unity administration in particular the labor party did not mention much about the fair share at all on the campaign and that was very tactical because um they probably was not sure what the reaction of, of the electorate, of their supporters, would be. And so they didn't mention it quite wisely, but immediately after they won, they were talking about, no, maybe not the fair share, but issues relating to the fair share, or issues relating to Nevis and good relationships, which they would like to, <coughs> to, to, um, to, to, to go forward with. And so it was tactical, yes, but as I say, it, it did not take rocket science to 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 get to to take that path. Really, it was a path that you know um, will not have bring much uncertainty to the 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 Labour Party. As I said, there is something that took place, and of course, it looks like it brings some sort of. Emotional division, I wouldn't even say division, emotional division between the people of Sinkis and the people of Nevis. Um, <coughs> advanced by the, by the politicians, of course. And um, for a moment, I think the people of Sinkis was very careful in looking after their affairs and um, left the Nevisians to, to also fight for what is theirs. And I think... Um, the, the 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 outcome of the of the of the election tend to point to the fact that the Kittitians wanted to reinstate a stable government, possibly a government which is formed strictly out of Sinkets, so they wanted all eight, and they wanted to to avoid the Nivision aspect of it, which I think the general public in Sinkets look at we. In in, 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 in in later times as as, as as the source of possible conflict in the um, in a federal administration um, <coughs> because that was the kind of atmosphere that was 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 established and and that kind of mindset was propelled by the politicians and um, I think the labor party did well because they were the party standing aside with the armed folds. And uh, think it's a labor country. Think it's a labor country. Whenever things get bad, whenever things get bad, I believe the people would go back home to labor. Um, of course, everyone understood the reason why the unity was formed. But I think also the people were seriously hurt 
by the debacle of, 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 the, of, of the Unity um, Administration, because really and truly it, it came across quite childish uh, as it relates to the breakdown of the government and then what has been said, the rhetoric on the campaign trail. Um, not good at all, not good at all for the country, not good at all for the politicians themselves that was propelling that kind of attitude, you know, and so, <coughs> you know, one could r easily uh, um, realize why the Labour Party um, took that victory pretty easily. And as I said, if I was a petition living in Sinkits, there's no way I would have voted for any other party but the Labour Party. Well, I would say this, that what the Honourable Ma uh, Mark Brantley did was commendable in terms of being principled. And this, of course, tells you that those who actually vie for governing us, <coughs> they have to come clean. And what the Honourable Mark Bradley was attempting to establish is forthrightness, truthfulness, honesty, in the whole nine yards. And therefore, a page could be taken from the CCM's playbook with reference to how they conducted themselves. But ultimately, the principled approach to bring a government or an administration to its knees regarding what well, they were looking forward for good leadership, honest leadership, to the extent when it was not forthcoming, this bold action was taken by the Honorable Sean Richards and the Honorable Mark Brantley and ultimately brought the administration of the former Prime Minister Timothy Harris to its knees. And therefore, they, this, this should be a a positive part of the playbook which politicians must be guided by. If you're not going to be honest, truthful, trustworthy, then the consequences are there. And it came full circle with reference to the end result. To thine own self be true. And if one believes in that motto, we would expect all the politicians to adapt a motto like that and be guided accordingly. To thine own self be true. And if you adapt that stance, it says, therefore, that things would work out well. Now, the Labour, the Sinkets Nevis Labour Party, I do not know where they stand at this juncture, but this should become part of the playbook that they have to be true to themselves and to be true to the government and hence there would be some degree of expected continuity with an administration that of course propels itself into government they're in government now and if they understood that little phrase, that little motto, to thine own self be true, which 
by extension, could be extended to the governed. And if that is extended to the governed, they'll be there for a long time. A long time. It's going to take a Herculean task to remove them if they decide to be true to themselves and be true to the governed and ultimately they will be at the seat of power again for a long time. Yeah, but there's there, there were internal rancor going on within the party. Um, you say good leadership. Um, I, for one, would question that because whether Dr. Harris was a good leader, or, or you know, um, a lot of people would think that he was a good leader. He, he did well for Sinkett's. And that's why he was so confident <laughs> to go back to the people. And, um, of course, and uh, with his many, many, many offers and adjustments, he, he, was, he was quite confident going back to the people. And um, the campaign was of that type that people think that he would have definitely make an impact. Um, so, if, you know, there were internal rancor. And the, the, the internal rancor, of course, was not exposed to the people. There was great dis dissatisfaction within the party, you know. Um, you, you know, Mr. Stanley, you're talking as if that Mark winfully um, and quite happily and was willing to bring down the government and find himself in the opposition. I, I don't think he was willing to do that. He was quite happy to do that. He was quite happy, yes, for the, admit the, the, the prime minister to change and for a, a, a semblance of the unity to continue. I would give him all the respect or anyone all the respect if there is internal wrangling within the government and because of that internal wrangling you would prefer to risk the opportunity of losing the government and going in, into the opposition I, I i i don't think at all that you know and anybody who who willing to do that they're very christ-like they're more than christ-like you know in a sense, you know, they're, they're, they are one of high moral standings, of course, maybe too high for politics in this world today. Um, and so I, I, I am not saying that, yes, Mark wanted the leadership to train because it was threatening and disrespecting to the, the internal members of, of, the, of the party and to what he had signed uh, on, on, the, on the courthouse apron. Um, but he, he, of course, would have preferred that yes we get rid of, of of dr harris and we continue as uh, a unity with, with, with pam i i don't think he was very um what could i say disregarding to the consequences um of bringing down the government i do think that he wanted to be back in government and um and, and, and continue doing his, his work, really. But that didn't happen, you know. Uh, basically, the point I'm trying to make is that no one will really bring down a government which they are a part of to find himself in the opposition and feel happy about that simply because the leader was a problem within the, the political party in power. I hope I've made my, 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 myself clear. Well, uh, what I would say is that the Honorable Mark Brantley told through the mic of Van Radio Dr. Timothy Harris I am going to keep my phone close by up until 12 Uh, the Honorable Timothy Harris called about an hour and 52 minutes later and said he has something but it was too little too late because if 
you're dealing with people who are legally operating by certain statements, certain agreements. You give them a deadline, and that, that deadline was set by the Honorable Mark Brantley, and had the former Prime Minister adhere to the deadline and not attempting to push the envelope, which it is, advancing it to one hour and 52 minutes later. I think had he called the station, the station and expressed the willingness for the Honorable Mark Grant to hold off, it would have been a good gesture on his part, but I think he probably thought he had a golden parachute in his back pocket from which he could escape the outcome which was terrible it was a terrible outcome based on stonewalling his stonewalling and as a result the government was brought down and you cannot blame the Honorable Mark Brantley for what occurred simply because he gave a he gave a deadline and the former Prime Minister never adhered to that deadline which ultimately caused the demise yeah but you know Mr. Stanley it was over after the PAM convention it was all over the demands made by Sean Richards and, uh, and Mark Brantley on the Prime Minister was quite unreasonable. No Prime Minister would have yielded to that. And so these were just superficial. No. You see, they were just superficial. They don't expect him to yield to that. I don't agree with you, but continue. Well, I just wanted to make the point. They, 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 they didn't expect him to yield, yield to that. No Prime Minister in their own mind would yield to these demands really you know asking the prime minister to surrender some of his authority and you know no they, they were very much un unreasonable and willfully unreasonable because they didn't want him to make up it was over I don't agree at the same time those demands were not unreasonable because I could tell you right now, had he yielded to those demands, he would have been still... No, no Prime Minister would have yielded to those demands. He would, have, he would still be there, he, yes, governing he the government. There, but he would have been a, an a, a man with obviously no inside, no integrity, no, no, no groundation in the office he holds. How could you write to the Prime Minister tell him to, 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 um, to, to, to give up some of his powers and stop his political exercise in palm constituencies? And, you know, just to mention two, you know, um, quite unreasonable at times, really. Um, so I didn't expect him to yield to that at all. He, he obviously... <laughs> um, laugh at the demands and try to go around the bush and 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 of course didn't did not respect that deadline um it, it looks a kind of way the way they wanted to deal with trump eh? <laughs> you know like you know when 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 they had the debate i could remember when biden tell trump call their name the proud boys the proud boys <laughs> and it's like you're really asking a big man to do something which he doesn't have to, but yet, maybe if he do, he can gain some support and probably he can lose some support. But what I'm saying, people, you cannot force people into a corner and, ex and expect them to act according 
to your expectations at times. People are people. That corner was created by the Honorable Prime Minister, to which he was forced into. But based on what has been lost in terms of the enormous amount of power, economic, political, social, in hindsight, 2020 hindsight, don't you think he would do the comparison and has come to the conclusion that he has lost more simple, simply because he didn't give in to the demands? Of course. He so, he maybe feel that way. I'm but, saying to you. Because he didn't give in to the demands, which was at the time unreasonable. And, 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 and um, yes, he would have had to bow. Him s bow. You were asking the Prime Minister to bow. There weren't unreasonable demands, in my view. Of course, I, I don't remember all the demands, but at the same time, based on what was said that I listened to, and also to make a public declaration that after two years he's going to give up the... the well, <laughs> the it was speech. part of the Charlestown Accord. But the, the writing was on the wall with reference to his attempting to generate enough support if I and to build... If I missed, I wouldn't give in to none of them. And to build his party. Mm. And ultimately... He failed miserably yeah. because they saw what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they decided to pull the plug. From day one, he was asked to understand his role. He was given the joy in the crown, the prime ministership having one seat. Ultimately, that one seat gave him the Prime Ministership. But not only the Prime Ministership, gave him control of being the head of a government. Yeah. An enormous amount of power. How could you make a comparison that he has not lost big time by not giving in to the demands. Oh, because yeah. he, he could have sold out the two terms. Could have. Keep, keep, the, keep the country from going through that trauma of a new election. And ultimately, he could have been part of a government for the next three years keeping all the people whom he had in terms of different departments heads because ultimately these department heads are going to be changed you know how many people well I don't want to call names, but there are people right now, a few people who are out of a job simply because he's no longer the head honcho, the prime minister. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I am saying to you, if he had made a comparison as to what he would lose, as to what he would salvage, or retain, he lost big time. Yes. So, agree. you're telling me that he should not have given in to, and he couldn't, could not have given in to those demands. He, he wasn't expected to give in to those demands. Mark nor Sean expect the Prime Minister to give in to Sure they, they did. Yes. Sure they did. Hmm. And I'm saying that, to say this, I'm surprised. that 
if they didn't expect him to give in, uh, uh, well, he didn't give in to those demands. In fact, the demands were but they saw they, 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 they saw on the other side, on the next column, in the next column, what the consequences are. And they actually went to the GG and told the GG, we have six. We do not like what the one is doing. And therefore, we are asking you, under the Constitution, to take him out, remove him. Remove him. But for whatever reason, the GG did not see it fit to remove Prime Minister Harris. And it, he probably would have done him a great favor had he done what the six had requested. And it would have served the country well because the former Prime Minister Timothy Harris was doing a good job for the country. But politically, he failed the team unity construct based on the agreement, what they signed on to. Yeah. And you don't have to put everything in writing. You don't. There are things that are unspoken, unwritten. But they are understood by inference as honorable men and women. He should have adhered to what was in the Charleston Accord and ultimately he would have been kindly looked at by the historians ten years hence. 20 years hence, but he failed, and failed miserably, simply because he was not you know that honorably. Do you know what I think, Mr. Stanley? The unity came together for a particular reason, and that was achieved. But the seams of the unity was not that tight and well-stitched. They don't have to be that tight and well-stitched. Well, well stitched. I, I am saying that because there was not. Because, trust me, Timothy Harris was on about developing his own party. Okay? Pam was seeking to gather his strength. But the only thing, Pam was giving me this some assurance that even if they get six, they're going to still take on the Nivisions to be a part of the government. As the former Prime Minister said, um, the national hero, um, Dr. Kennedy Simmons, in, in, was in the convention, he said, they are our friends. You remember in, 19, in the 80s, we get sufficient to form the government, but we still took them on, you know? Even though they give us some our kind of position and thing, Minister of Environment or whatever. Okay, he still take us on, you know, and so that they was they wanted to, you know, establish that kind of, of 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 unity, and and friendship, with the CCM from Nevis. But you cannot escape the fact that Pam was looking to strengthen its hand in, and of course, once <laughs> Pam gets sufficient, then they might have they probably would have done with um, the PLP part of things, you know. Everyone was really looking to strengthen the hand. The purpose was achieved, that was to get rid of Denzel Douglas, and after that the scenes wasn't that tight. But the scenes was never really tight, to be quite honest. The scenes was never really tight. You're governed by your inner man. Again I said, to thine own self be true, and you can understand what that means. But I also want to tell you that so, sometimes some things must be in writing. Yes, must. For it to hold up in court. 
uh, to ah, go in look, a court of law. In a court of law. Well, to, to, go should, beyond, it, to go it, beyond. It should be in writing. To go beyond. But there's, there's also a, a written document within us. A written document. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying about to thine own self be true. You know right from wrong. You know when no. you're going to, no. in fact, give somebody a 609. And it doesn't have to be written. That's common ground in, in our political um, intercourse. Giving a 609. <laughs> It, the game is not a, 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 a tidy up, nice, clean game, you know. Uh, and let's face it, last week you were saying um, politics made strange bedfellows, or words to that effect. And I asked you, well, what happened to integrity? Remember, they are leading people. But these things happen, you know. Um, there is a, a dark part in our, in our democracy, which is going to haunt us, you know. And... Um, we probably will have to look at that a, a little more carefully, you know, um, because this idea that nervous politicians would be with Pam or they would be with Labour or someone else in Sinkers, it doesn't make us look too good. It makes us look like we are just dry leaf in the wind and where we find ourselves, you know, where the benefits seems to be more or forthcoming we w work with that program. Sometimes we wish that we had a direction. We wish that we had objectives. You know, we wish of more for more certainty going forward. Nevis doesn't have that. And um, these things n need to look at here in Nevis, because I think only Nevisians can solve ne the Nevis problem, you know. Where are we today, sir? We are forging ahead. You take a look around and you'll see that we are forging ahead. We, we, we are fo yeah, we, we are forging ahead. <laughs> you know, when we were kids, we used to go up to Hamilton, right? And we used to aim at the chimney and get there. There was no real path, eh? So we go through all the bush and the bushes and we get scrub up, you know, go through all the bushes and because the, the chimney is our aim and there was no it's real a, path it's a, it's a guide. to take us there. And I wish there was a real path and I see Nevis in the same context. We're going to get scrub up, scrape up, you know, our features might even change. We might lose the love we have for our country in this process. Not real patriots. Not real patriots. Yes, real, we, we will become patriots. not real patriots. Look, real the, consciousness, patriots. the consciousness of Nevis need to be rebuilt. I'm so happy that I hear just um, recently that um, there are a few people selling books and so forth. No, we don't have to go by saying it's in the thousands come September anymore. I'm so happy. I'm wondering if somebody couldn't empower somebody up here that they can do the business. Little things like that means a lot to Nevis. That the money stay in Nevis. This is the, is the consciousness we got to start build amongst ourselves, brother. You know, when we reach in our other hands to people across the water, they shake it when they want. Look, we got to look after on our fears in a more serious way. Governments have to reach out and empower people sometimes just to, 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 to have our own circular flow of income and expenditure happening here in Nevis. Nevis go to too much leakage, too much leakage. Think it sucks, Nevis. It does. Do you have all the evidence to support your accusation? I don't have all the evidence. I have a lot of evidence. I have some. Well, yes, we spend too much money across the waters. Our economy, that's what we're talking about, Mr. Stanley. We need to see more circular flow here in, in our country, you know. We find ourselves having to go sink it. And, and, and I was talking to the other day, and, 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 and two people I know made some investment to stock the books for the kids so that thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars don't find its way into Bastia from Nevis every September. I feel so happy about that. And I'm wondering if, you know, 
somebody couldn't have empowered somebody to do that. I mean, just take some money, give the people $100,000 and say, look, we're going to stop this flow. And to do the betterment of Nevis, you know? And um, something like that have happened. Maybe institutions, people have, have and, and, and I'm very happy. And I think that's the consciousness I want to see going on, you know. Bill Nevis, Bill Nevis, yes, Nevis. Too much politicians talking back and forth to each other and forget the country called Nevis and forget its people. Forget its people. And that's why I, I love Dr. Daniel. And they're celebrating his legacy, but none of them want to carry on. No, them. <laughs> Nevis need leadership. Nevis need aspiring, not aspiring, inspiring leadership. Serious thing. Okay? More can be done in that respect. In a big way. And when you talk like this, everybody talk that you, you're talking about secession. Not necessarily. Think it's people afraid of the word, and Nevis people afraid to talk about it. Okay? That's the solution, really, for Nevis. Well, but, but we are in a delay, and we intend to delay it and delay it and delay it. And delay. No one wants to deal with the hard work. Dr. Daniel said that Nevis create the bridge for us to step across. And we have leaders today who seems to cast a blind eye on the aspiration of the people. The majority of Nevis people want to see, want political separation for Sinkis. And the politicians in Nevis, Dr. Daniel and Mark, don't want to talk about it. That's a problem. I don't care what they say. I really don't care what nobody say. That's a problem. I've been around politics long enough. That's a problem. And that's why we're going to get scrub up. We're going to try to get to a point by not walking the path, going through the bushes. We're going to even change our features. There's more times we probably don't even like Nevis in the end. Just think about Nevis, man. A die-hard <laughs> patriarch will never change his color, his color, his or her color. Will not change his stance or his or her stance. At the same time, you must not be misguided. You know, Mr. Stanley. Uh, they have stated, Dr. Drew, I think, the Prime Minister, current Prime Minister, good. has stated that it is possible that we might take a look at certain provision in the Constitution mm -hmm. and get, bring those sections into Parliament and use the parliamentary route to amend certain sections of the Constitution. Well, Good evening. Thank you for holding. Right. Good night, Weber. Good night, Weber. You're on the air. Could you go ahead? Good, yeah, good night, Weber. Good night, Mary. Good night, Stanley. Evening, sir. Good night. Yeah, this is Mr. Politics. We are missing in the program. Mm. Now, Stanley, I listen to you, right? Very clear. Now, if these, these guys, right? Mark Bentley and Sean Richard, you know, they went to the governor with a motion and a confidence against the prime minister. Don't you think if they did stay here, with the Prime Minister and walk, try to walk around him with the three years, three more years to go. Don't you think it will be better for them? Well, based on what happens. better for them because look, at, look what position they're into now. Well, hindsight. Pam is, Pam is, in, a position, is up in, in, in a position now. And you could say system is in opposition because they're on the opposition bench. And they 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 got a fair chance to work out something with the then prime minister was there. And we will still get maybe more and where they and where maybe they're gonna get now. You know? So I be, I believe that if these guys they stick around and work it out for the five years, I mean work it out for the five years, for the three more years. Because if people let them know it's people in the unity. Yep. Is we go and let unity government, not them come up with the proposal. Is we say we want unity. You understand? Is that correct? And 
he he say to the weedy waters, to the town, the back, and the people, and went to the, the governor general to, to file a motion and a confidence against the prime minister. And I believe that is where the position they into because people upset about what's going on. That's why the water thrown out was the law. Because a lot of some people they went out to work. Because every, every, everywhere the people are complaining to me, what, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? Some people complaining to me to ask me what, what shall I do? You understand? Support it, they continue this thing and let the thing go to the 45 years. But you see, you know, they, they, give, labor, they give labor the edge. And when Dr. Simmons made the, 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 this, the remarks again, he strength labor again. Because, only so I believe, like, like, I mean, if the unity, if unity, if unity remain 45 years, I do not think the labor would have had a chance to get in government so easy again in the, in, in the federation. All right, then. I'll continue to listen to the program. Well, all I can tell you, caller, is that based on the outcome, nobody wanted those people who support the unity construct never wanted the results of August 5th. At the same time, the Honorable Timothy Harris, former Prime Minister, was told from early o'clock, we are at a certain juncture and these are our demands. And he kept kicking the can down the road. So, you can understand that a certain amount of patience was thin to the end it wore out and you can't blame Sean and Mark for asking the Prime Minister to have a meeting and the Prime Minister keep coming up with all kinds of excuses and reasons and kept kicking the can down the road to buy time so it was something that was a foregone conclusion once it is a genuine request you look at the request see it see the merits of the request and you compromise that is the art of politics but if you're bent in one direction and that direction is to delay delay and with excuses some of which didn't make too much sense in terms of bringing the World Bank to count the money. <laughs> that was hogwash. So he delayed, he kicked the can down the road because he had something else in view. He didn't want to really have a genuine meeting from day one with these other gentlemen or the other ministers. And as a result, the ultimate was done that brought down the unity construct that gave the Labour Party, Sinkis Nevis Labour Party, the edge. Now, the caller keep kept saying allow the three years to reach to its mm -hmm. crescendo reach to its end but at that time what would have happened is everybody is everybody's guess 
the PLP might have gotten enough people believing in the leadership of Dr. Harris and ultimately would have voted his party over CCM, the CCM, over the PAM, and ultimately give him full control of an administration by which he was given the jewel in the crown as the starter and ultimately yeah, but Pam was aiming to do the same thing well listen you can't blame the other party for attempting to do the same but at the same time when the chips are low you have to come clean and this is what I'm saying again to thine own self be true because those two leaders Sean Richards and Mark Grantley saw exactly what <coughs> the former Prime Minister was attempting to do and therefore they call him out but he didn't want to be called out and he kept kicking the can down the road but let me say Sean was also now I go to the microphone sorry uh, Sean the palm was also developing their strength in their hand with the only assurance for Nevis that even if they get sufficiency that they doesn't need Nevis they would have still employ us but both the PAM and the PLP was doing the same thing going forward strengthening their hands to their own demise but you see, but you're only talking about Dr. Harris, but Pam was doing the same thing. And that's why I said the unity seemed wasn't well sown. Well, it was a weak seam. Well, like I said, there are some barriers that are made of things such as the foot knocks, the metal that foot knocks built of, mm -hmm. and some fence wire are as flimsy but it is still a barrier yeah. you don't cross that yeah so using that analogy the scenes in the unity construct were not that rigid and consequently dr harris former prime minister so we he could wiggle and dodge and ultimately worked his way out of it when he could have capitulated come to the table agree to the demands and save the administration his administration save PAM save unity save PLP and uh, save his the positions of the federal government in terms of heads of government those people who depend on them for leadership so what the fellow is saying to us now the caller he's trying to say that they should have given the former Prime Minister, more time. More time for what? More time for what? He could have agreed and to have accepted their demands and save his administration. Well, that would have been uh, the perfect thing for the unity. But that to, is what they signed up to, for. To, to, um, to continue. Um, and that's why, that's why the remnants of the unity were so harshly punished. Because they have let down the electorate. 
I was so disgusted by their behavior. Even those that get fired, they just take it so casually to laugh at it. These are people elected by the people to do the job. And the way they take their position after being fired and the whole debacle, all of them, seem was, seems to be very irresponsible to the electorate. Like they don't care about the people. They got the government. They got vast the majority of the seats. You know, and the way things crumble with the further um, firing of, of six ministers, everybody's just making this thing a big joke. Like, the six ministers don't care whether or not they're fired or what. They, 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 they're, they're making mark of it. I hear um, Powell and think it's that he was on, on ear when he got the letter. He's laughing about it. I find there was something belittling, belittling to the, the electorate, okay, about this whole thing. Um, you can point fingers and say who break, who caused the breakup and all that, you know, a lot of that's been done. But together, they all acted to me well beneath what is expected of them as elected representatives. The electorate was vexed with them. Still vexed. Simply because they all those people who voted for team unity, those people who have worked tirelessly for the success of team unity, they are grossly disappointed based on what occurred in terms of the results on August 5th. Okay, so we have high hopes now. We got a new prime minister in place. Things seem very new. It's a new page mm -hmm. in our history. And so, uh, can we say that Nevis have high hopes? Sure. Quite so. Because Prime Minister Drew has already reached out to the Honorable Mark Brantley. Do you think? And vice versa. Do you Honorable think? Honorable Mark Brantley has already reached out to Prime Minister Drew. And as a result, things are going to happen in a positive way. But you would agree with me I am that... I'm an optimist. Yes, but you would agree with me that on the unity, our hopes was the highest it, it, it ever has been. Well, the history... Uh, under the unity, 2015, the history, going forward. History would reveal that the best thing happened to Sinkit Nevis since independence is team unity, the unity construct, the Charleston Accord brought these three leaders, three parties together, and big things happened, but big things happened. Things were, were I'm not sure if you're saying, you're saying the best thing happened since 1980 was the unity. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, Check the record. Think it's a Nevis. The think it's Nevis. Think it's Nevis seems to be very much divided in 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 this shower rain more than it ever ever has been since 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 the um <coughs> since independence. I'm searching my mind because it's a long time, and I know we went for a referendum, and you know, but <coughs> to me, the people got more involved with this one, in a sense, because, again, of the rhetoric of, of, of the politicians on their campaign. Of course, not the Labour Party. You know, I could feel that push, that people push and pull, more than back even in the 90s. It was more an administrative breakdown. But I want to say this, you know, Nevis, Nevis, Nevisians must not only think about Nevis when there's a row. We should think about Nevis when there is good, um, good relationship. We can leave the Federation when there is good relationship. It's best to leave the Federation when there is good relationship. We don't have to uh, 
I mean, be emotional about it. I wanted to make that point because we always seem to, after a row, we start talking about class 113, so we are never prepared. No. Look, you must understand that clause yeah. 113 was put there, but it is alleged not to be used. No, that's foolishness. Right. Dr. Daniel, Dr. Daniel, birthday was yesterday or day before on the twenty second. I understand. And you're telling me he put a clause that is not to be used. Look, let's just say the Constitution of Saint Kitts has gone beyond its expectation as it relates to the framers of the Constitution. The Constitution was not made to carry on with the Federation. It was a Constitution, almost like an interim thing because Nevis was expected to go its own way. And that's why all this conflict about double salary and so forth come in. Because it was not meant to be continuing in, in, in the form it was constructed up to today. And good, that e is good evening, thank you for holding. That is a fact. Good evening, thank you for holding. Yeah, good night again, good night again. Good night again, good night again. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Good now, night. what happened? Now, what happened, right? No, <coughs> no, no, you're so right. Because let me tell you something. If all of you in a unity and you are got a disagreement, and <coughs> now Pam had the convention, the Prime Minister went to the convention with the Minister Akila, that what, what, what will entail to with, with him, and the embarrassment. He get from the board, Pam and Sissian. You understand? Send a message to the people then. If the people then could create unity. And no, the Prime Minister are part of the unity. The, the then Prime Minister was a part of the unity. And he went to a Pam Convention. And get so much work, get so much close down. You understand? So he left Labour, he Labour supporters then, eyes and the ears up, not wide, wide, wide. You understand? They had no other choice to do what they got to do. That, that, that is just it. C can't you better know that? Huh? If they try to work it out for the, 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 three, the three years, I believe it will be a better way to do it. Because nobody knows what could happen in the three years. Nobody knows what could work out in the three years. When they can work out now, they can't work out nothing now. Because they, 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 they're in a position. The two parties now in a position. The three parties must be in a position. When they can work out now, all right, then I will continue with the program. The unity construct, based on what I've heard, we, based on the income per capita for the residents and citizens of Nevis, we are third in the world based on the income per, cap per capita. Mm. That is a tremendous achievement, meaning that people's income has risen to a certain level where we are able to afford certain things in life, or the better things in life, reasonably, reasonably. So, based on what I stated regarding the best thing is team unity since independence. The statisticians would bear me out. Or oh, they got the statistics. Hence, we all have to say, praise the Lord. We are somewhat the envy of the world regarding the standard of living in St. Kitts and Nevis. So, what we should have done was to have brought the Prime Minister, find ways to get him to understand the grievances, but with the swearing in, it is said in the, at the spirit ringing, you can't disclose what occurs in cabinet.
publicly. So those guys who, the elected leaders or the elected parliamentarians who were part of the team unity construct just couldn't publicly come out from day one to say that they're unhappy about A, B, C, as the case might be. Mm -hmm. But the former Prime Minister understood that they just based on the oath, they cannot disclose what has gone on in Cabinet. But eventually, it had to be disclosed to the public. Well, when the government break up. And ultimately, the ship sprung a leak, the leak got bigger, the seams got weaker, and eventually, the ship went down. So, it's going to take a month's task to put that ship back together. But you have to have people who are trustworthy. And based on what I said, to thine own self be true. If you go in there with the expectation of serving the people and serving it, be true to yourself. We will have another good government. Hopefully, maybe in the next 10 years, 15 years, as the case might be, the Labour Party likes a, a long run. <laughs> you think it's the Labour Party likes a long run. And in that regard, Dr. Drew, not going to, I hope, let me qualify that by saying I hope, he's not going to attempt to bring about an administration that's going to serve the people just for the first five years. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Yes, Mr. Albert. Um, I just want to make a little contribution to your program. You know, um, I listened to <coughs> the discussion, and I listened to some of the things that Mr. Stanley is saying here. But you know where this whole thing went wrong? At the Palm Convention. You can, you can want to sit down and talk with me, bring well, either 17 or 18 demands after you cussed me off a couple of weeks ago prior to when they had the meeting. Or you're going to want to cuss me off and then when you're done, you want to sit down and talk with me. It don't work that way. Hmm. And you know, only Saturday, my fr myself and a friend were talking and the friend said to me, we were talking about the same um, matter with the election. I mean the breaking up of our armed immunity. He said, my brother, let me tell you what happened. He said this whole thing was planned by CCM and Palm, and especially, especially invited Mark Brantley to be the guest speaker to do exactly what he did. It was something planned. So, I'm going to just say, you cannot cut me off and they want to talk with me after. I'll continue to listen, gentlemen. Well, let me ask the caller. Have you have you really listened to the Honorable Mark Bradley's program? And if you have listened, you would have heard that it's been brewing, simmering, boiling over a long period of time. And as a result, he was <coughs> invited as the keynote speaker, if you want to call it that. And as a result, he actually made public some of the grievances. But it really wasn't something that was concocted by the two leaders for the convention itself. It started a long time ago. And you would hear, you've got to trust and verify. But I was told, and I heard it through the grapevine, that P. 
CLP set up some of its dogs to go after Mark and other people in CCM and also in PAM. And therefore, even something regarding the foreign ministry, Mark did a good job in the foreign ministry. But one particular person, not going to call him name, was always there haranguing him. And Mark complained, look, if you want to have unity in this construct, call off your dogs. Yeah. That's so the thing. fellow who, the last caller, is saying that you cannot curse me out and then expect to have a meeting with me. Politics makes strange bedfellows. And you have to have some degree of tolerance to tolerate the haranguing. And if you have set your dogs on, as the former Prime Minister did, allegedly, 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 then you have to understand that there would be backlash or backlashes. And that is the genesis of the collusion, allegedly, allegedly, of PAM and CCM. But you can't ignore the fact that these dogs were there and they were set on for purpose, allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. And they do have the effects. And the effects were supposed to have discredited Sean Richards and Mark Brantley. So enough blame is there to go around. But you have to look at the genesis as to where it started, how it started, and for what reason? There's no question about it. If you have agreed that you're going to serve only two terms, and it seems to the lookers-on within the construct that you want to go for a third term, these people are learned men and women. And they look at body language, they listen to the citations, they listen to the discourse, not only out of parliament, but inside parliament. So, based on what went on, there was enough, allegedly, information coming out to poison the atmosphere of the relationship between the Prime Minister and these other two gentlemen. But it didn't happen at the convention only, like I said. It happened from day one. Oh, yeah. That's why I say, um, <clears throat> after the, the, the convention marked to me, there was no coming back from that, because as the callers say, after you don't cost me half. I mean, once things are brought to the public like that, internal negotiations are difficult to arrive at. Good evening, thank you for holding. Yeah, good evening, Rebo, Naya and Mr. Stanley. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stanley, you just said something to you. That the, this thing, what happened, that break up the, well, these are my words now, that break up the unity. It started a long time. And if they went into an agreement to be unified, as three parties come together as one, with genuinity in them heart, 
and sincerity sincerity in their heart to be a unification a unificated party it would have last but they went in there with one purpose and that was to get rid of dr douglas and the farewell after they get rid of dr douglas well this is a chance now for me to get this position and that one to get that position the last caller before me i agree with him what he said I know you have been saying a lot of things tonight here on the show. That know you saw them before they happened and he's, and he's saying it like it is. Now, what they did, they pushed the cat all the way in front of the house. And then when they're done, they want to come back and put the cat behind the house and think the cat, the house can go. No, you don't cause out the man. Mr. Stanley, you have a business. And if a, a, a customer come to you to buy gas, and each time they buy you gas, they care I'm missing. What they're supposed to do is come back to you and say, well, Mr. Stanley, every time my boy gas here, my car is missing. And I think you need to check your pumps. Water leaking in somewhere. Not go out in the street and a public address system and tell the whole world that your gas has been water and don't go there, boy. You don't do that. You come and reason first. And in reasoning, and you don't get, you don't get any satisfactory with the complaint that they brought to you. Then you go public. That's what the Bible said. Talk to the man in the church, the pastor, whoever in the church, behaving wrong. Call him by himself and talk to him privately. And if you continue, you call us a third person. And if you continue, then you go public. You don't go public and then come back. Thank you for listening, Webo. All right, thank you. Caller, <coughs> caller, I hope you uh, would keep your radio on. I have not been privileged to see the letters which the Honorable Mark Brantley wrote to the former Prime Minister. But the Honorable Mark Brantley stated categorically, and a caller challenged him on his program with reference to letters that were written. And the Honorable Mark Brantley in told the caller he would be glad for him uh, to make the letters available. Good evening, thank uh, Let's see. Good evening, thank you for holding. Yes, and good night to all of your panelists. Good night. Good night. Quite interesting. Excuse them, more excuses. But you see, everybody had time for reflection now, because we are on the same side. And some were so sure that they would still be in and the others would be outside. The story of Heyman and Mary Kay come to mind, you know. When Heyman was sure, sure that he would get rid of Mordecai, he went home and built a gallows. And it so ended up that he ended up on the same thing. And it caused the Labour Party to win by default. Because those, those who watch or read the social media, you could see the, the reaction of many of the people who voted, they're now demanding whether well, I want it, I want that. So, and then you have a one-party majority. All is not lost, you know. It's for everybody to become sober because we are all asking for amendments to the Constitution which cannot be done by the Labour Party alone. So others still have um, negotiation spaces. God, I think some people chop down in the oh, all is, all is not lost. So many other things, you know? And some people from the old, 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 old labor are encouraging Dr. Drew, and I don't know how much pressure he can resist. We're all expecting better. But as one had said, he don't rule himself. Doesn't rule himself. 
as much as he wants to do better, there are elements in the party. You hear them on the radio calling for all sorts of things, and I still have not heard a definite answer as to how we intend to deal with Nevis issue. He's still very vague. You're going to get to have to get it in law and whatever. At what point will the AG draft the law? At what point? And has Nevis received its subvention for this month? Does anybody know? No. Maybe not last Does anybody month. know? I, know? I don't know. I'm unaware. Huh? I'm unaware. But you also find out. Because that you can't come with that trick. Oh, we have to, we have to work out, I mean, you know. Because there are elements. But bear in mind, everybody have a part to play. Everybody have a part to play. All is not lost. And it is up to... You see, our people, I was listening to Agando now. I was listening to some videos last night. I think it was on the television, on the Catholic station, they were talking about the rise of the socialist movement in America. And they ended by saying, they were quoting the person, don't remember the name, he says, as a politician, you do not have to keep the promises you make to the people. Have you ever heard or read it? So you don't have to? Of course not. You should. Eh? You should. But that is the premise. You know, he said, you don't have to. I think he's the one who wrote the rules of radicals. I had that book when I was in university. You don't have to. Because a lot of us have very high expectation. But all the decision making is not left up to Dr. Drew alone. I hope you're aware of it. I wish him well, but he has to remember that he needs the opposition in order to carry out his mandate. He cannot on his own or with his party amend the Constitution. And Nevis has his position, which while I don't really support um, secession, it should be known that it is a viable option. As, as, as my bird said, we were running around from it. I keep telling myself it is still in the Constitution, you know. And if you've got to pull your card, you pull your card. Rather than have, make it, oh, well, if you don't, like they say, oh, they could have wait until. That, that's a ridiculous. Wait until you totally wipe out. Then one in and two out. I feel sorry for everybody. Because as, as, Stanley said, unity did a lot of good things. It's quite obvious you walk around in the country, you see. The modernization of the, of the infrastructure, the improvement. They did a lot of good things. There's no denying it. In every sphere, they did a lot of good things. But attitude determines everything. And Dr. Harris's fall from grace was engineered by people within his party and other people with selfish interests. Cause I like him, but there were elements who felt that they would get a bigger deal, a bigger slice of the cake, if he alone controlled the government. And they were the ones, you hear about him, oh, he make the best leader. But who is the leader now? You know, I show him feel really bad. Who is the leader now? He's not in the leader of the opposition. You know, so, tell my country, and Dr. Joe, please do not take them on. Remember, you need the opposition to get the mandate going. All right, then. Caller, before you go. I'm here. I, I wanted to introduce a, a question for this evening. Yes, speak up a little louder. Yes, I wanted to introduce a question for this evening. Go right there. For us to look at. Um, it is not entirely on... Um, looking at what happened a couple of weeks ago. But it's something in my view that is very important in the society. So the question is, how much and to what degree do you think alternate facts are shaping the society and uh, de determining who we are as a people? 
meaning that a lot of people we have a lot of instances where people know things are not true they're pushing them forward nonetheless finding a multitude to follow them and then you know having those things which are not true helping to shape the society you know when i hear alternate facts i always say why well, because i was a math teacher when no one is to you know right i use it use it because of, of uh, the terminology they use now <laughs> I, I hear them you know not, because if alternate facts then something is one of the two not true right but people make statements to justify their position that's all there is to it because the facts are there you know we could go all around it. Who do this and how responsible the facts are there. And at the end, look at the facts now. The facts are one target, none at all. You know that one? Mm -hmm. All right then. But it, it continues. Listen to the discussion and the debates. Right. Listen to the discussion and the debates. I told somebody, said, look, in 2015, they had three seats. In 2020, they had two. Did anybody say well the party is going to disappear? You know, talking about alternative facts. Oh, well, they only got one seat and the one got two seats. Well, how many you, you go from seven to three to two? They only in now because unity broke up. That's a fact. And, and whether we like it or not, many people are still disappointed. I for one, because we were tired, we, we were tired of the tribalism. The way it is now, it is beginning to, to spring back up again. Spring back up, unfortunately, when Nevis, Nevis now taking the blood because they can't cause Pam, Pam and Wansi. PLP got one. So the only person that could um, terrorize now is Nevisians and threaten them by holding or withholding what is theirs, that's all there is to it. And when the Lord help us, and give us understanding and wisdom, and Dr. Drew again, say, we need we telling you, you've got to learn to stand up to all those old people in the party who have asked to grind. Is grind in act makes Dr. Harris on the opposition bench, you know? All right then, good I night. I thank you. Let me get a break. This is Talk That Get Results with Edric W. Stanley, Conrad Nye Library. Your phone calls on 1 869 469 1616 and 1700. I'm due for a break, but let me take this and come back. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Good night, brother. Weber, how the night is back? All right. And how you doing with your people you're talking to the radio station? All right. And maybe you go with the love of the Almighty. No, I had a little conversation with you and Sylvie just now. So I would like to follow from Miss Mama Sylvie left off there because I realize she she failed to put the real emphasis on how the Constitution is made up when it comes to the emphasize of changing the constitution they say is that two third right we will get our people to have a change in our constitution but let me put the real facts into order if it is two third the government uh, 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 the administrators who lead in don't have their, their majority in shares of the two third so let me put it in understanding if the people for them there they need to take a referendum so when the referendum comes then we have a over to how we go forward in changing the constitution. That's how you think about that, Weber. Yeah, well, we'll ask the panel about that, but we got your question, okay? Yeah, because well and truly, the tutor can't work in up because a poor young says in your last one in the tutor. <laughs> and then it's another emphasis now where we find a lot of people in this party here have a glimpse in the, the colonial aspect of life. So we don't have no change. Okay. Uh, they got we, you. And we really need to really have a better understanding the, the debate of changing the constitution. We have a safe night. Okay, thank you. I'm going to get the break and they'll, they'll address your 
question. So if he says we got a lot of gangster with him, that, that, that's true. <laughs> Boy. Okay, let me get a break. This is thought that get results. Back right after this. Paradise is offering a large variety of floor and wall tiles at very competitive prices. Builders Paradise has over 2 million pieces in stock, lots of different styles to choose from. Whether you're renovating or tiling a new house, Builders Paradise has what you need. Wow! Oh, and remember, we're open all day Saturday to serve you better. This is something that you can't refuse. Visit Builders Paradise today at the C.A. Paul Saltwell Industrial Site in St. Kitts or call them at 466-4938. When V.O.N. vibrates, the whole Caribbean must shake. 8.60 a.m. The Power House. Back in this episode of Talk That Get Results with Edric W. Stanley, Conrad Nye Liber, your phone calls on one 869 Four six nine one six one six and or one seven zero zero. Let's go back to the lines. Good evening. Okay, please, caller. Uh, please try again. One eight six nine four six nine one six one six or one seven zero zero. Which one of you agree that there's a lot of gangsterism? Anybody agree with that? Uh, no, just <laughs> good evening. Thank you for holding. Uh, good evening to you and your panel. Um, one of the misconception that happened in, in 2015 was that that was the end of tribalism. What we had there then was not a government of national unity, but a government consisting of a coalition of opposition, then opposition parties, to go against an incumbent Labour Party. And as a result, the tribalism never stopped. Okay? And what we have now is, yes, there's a one seat, just a one seat ma um, majority in government, but that one seat majority is essentially um, a huge majority, represents a huge majority of petitions, just like the three seat, um, that the three seats that the CCM has represents the majority of the vision. And so what needs to happen now is negotiations between the, the two, the NIA and the federal government, which represent, essentially represents petitions. Negotiations there to end the squabbling once and for all. And it should not be up to just Dr. Jew and Premier Brantley. It should be more inclusive to include the oppositions in both on both islands as well as the wider society, civil society. Otherwise, we would probably just be back where we started um, in the future. Caller, might I ask you something just for clarity? Sure, go ahead. The, the, when you say the um, the NIA the government that, in a sense, represents syndicates, the opposition or the other parties and the, um, the wider society, um, how are you suggesting to, to do that? A, a constitutional conference. That is what it's going to take. A conference? Yes, a constitutional conference. Mm -hmm. It's not just about fair share for needless. That's another mistake we're making. Yeah, but when, when, yeah, what's a constitutional conference? A meeting, or, um, basically, it's a, a series of meetings that here, that gets input from all the, the stakeholders that I spoke about and fashioning a new constitution. Mm, okay. That takes uh, into account okay. not just the things like the revenue sharing, the economic um, things, but also the political things as well. Okay, I, I got you. Mm -hmm. is, is it fair, and the question I'd like to pose, is it fair if, let's say, in 2027, one party in St. Kitts got five seats, and then let's assume that the 
a party in Nevis got um, three seats again, right? And decided to combine with, let's say, the other party in St. Kitts, which would have gotten three seats, and essentially forced a government onto St. Kitts that Kittitians did not vote for, because they, they got five out of eight. That, that's not fair. Those are not arrangements that make for stability. So I'm saying that we should fix the, the and, and it's going to take a constitutional change to do the, the kinds of fixes that are needed. Okay. Yes, there is clause 113, but as it is right now, I think that the, govern, the federal government has leverage over um, Nevis as well. So you can say it's equal. Both, both have um, leverage over the other. And so get down to serious negotiations to end this squabbling once and for all. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes. The, the, any? Well, we will, mm -hmm. we will, we will. I think <coughs> what the caller was talking about when he speak to um, spoke of um, the two thirds have some gangsterism involved. Right? <laughs> I think he's, he's talking colonialism, you know, um, um, because we realize it's it's a source of stagnancy that two thirds thing. Um, we find this all over Africa in constitutions, and I sometimes wonder why. Um, so you think that should change the, the, that number? Well, it, it, it's a minority majority. thing that brings a lot of stagnancy. Yeah, but my question is, you think it should change to a, a majority instead of two-thirds? Certain in, in certain areas, uh, for certain aspects. Good evening, thank you for... Um, caller, please try again. Um, good evening, thank you for holding. Okay, um, I'm very sorry about that. Okay, let's see. Okay, caller, please try again. We have a, a little technical issue there. Okay, I think I got it. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Evening. I've been listening to the program, and it's very interesting. I've heard some comments made by um, the gentleman tonight. Um, it's the best thing that ever happened to think is new since 1983. I think that Mr. Stanley said that. Yeah. How could we consider this the best thing since the part, the unity was broken up in, you know, let's say seven years, broken up. It has a big split. It has a seemingly a, a big divide between St. Kitts and Nevis. Things are not always what they seem. And I've heard this repeatedly. And, you know, it seems as though it's true. We do not know what transpired during the seven years. We heard a lot of things during the past, you know, two, three months. Things that we never, ever even thought about. Leaders getting on the platform, on radio, and saying things that we found very, very, you know, uncomfortable to listen to. And I don't think that could ever been the best thing since happened since 1983. We heard so much. And now, in the end, the people went out voted and seemingly the place is a little you know more settled and quiet based on decisions to me we have a government in St. Kitts and I would say that during the time we had all been fighting you know uh, verbally uh, for on radio between the unity members CCM and Pam you didn't hear anything from Labour I think Labour were in a corner cementing themselves putting in candidates in place, and so on. And you heard nothing from them until everything broke loose, and then they came out, well, we have this party that's going to take over from them. And we had so much, you know, tribalism between them at that time, the other parties. And, that, you know, it was obvious that they were going to fall. It was obvious to me that they were going to fall, and I think we did it, they did it to themselves. Sean Richards, I think, as somebody said earlier, it started at the PAM convention because nobody knows what Douglas, what um, Prime Minister Timothy Harris had in mind. They all assumed that he was not going to, you know, remain for the two terms. He was going to probably want to go for a third term, but nobody had a proof of that. It's just assumptions. 
and they push it out of the earth, and then eventually he came to the con conclusion and basically admitted that, well, he, he might want to for the three terms. And he started to build a party. And I think all these stuff as this has started when at that PAM convention, and then Timothy came out and started to release a lot of information that we didn't expect him to release. And that put down, you know, the entire party. But as I said, things are not always what they seem. We need to make take a good note of that. It may seem as though that things are going good. It may seem as though we have something in place. But the fact is that we do not know. We do not know what happened behind closed doors. We know now that um, Labour was, you know, getting themselves together as one body. People were crying about Douglas, Douglas is terrible from the party because him being there is going to make Labour stay in the wilderness for years. Dr. Douglas stayed there and he is in there with them. And those who were saying they're going to make him retire at the opposition benches are here now. And he is in government. You know, so you have to look at these things very, very carefully. I think the things that we say as leaders and as people are calling into the radio shows and so on, makes a big difference. And you know, at the end of the day, the people speak, and we have to abide by their decision. I mean, think it was a free and free election, the best team won, and now we'll have to see what happens from this point onwards. Uh, thank you so very much. I thank you. Yeah, well, I, I, I was supposing maybe less of the two third things and more, more, more of a referendum um, would be probably something that you know that 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 prevents the stagnancy sometimes um, because um, we expect and Dr. Jew did make mention of effectuating some change with the constitution. But we really that name know. one prime minister that you know of who did not make that pledge. Okay, I'm, I can't say. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Hello. Good evening, Robo. Yes. Yeah. Um, <coughs> earlier on, a gentleman called and said that you can't just cuss off a man and then expect to sit down with him. And I so disagree with that. This is not a case of cussing off. This is a case where you, you, you lay the facts out, and that's what Mark Bentley did at the PAM convention. This confusion started long before that convention. It started at the PLP convention when Timothy Harris brought Gopal from Trinidad, the scientist, political scientist Gopal from Trinidad, to say that when there is a, when there is a, 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 a prime minister that's doing well, he, 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 deserves, to, he, he deserves to continue working. No, that's not the agreement that we have. And that lady couldn't come here and say that. Unless Timothy said it to her. He could say what he want. But who who believe anything that he said anymore? So that's that that started a long time. And he he was building building activists and and elements in in the, the, the constituencies of the, of his fellow his fellow unity partners from the, as early as the first term as early as the first term he went into this convention with one thing in mind is to be prime minister for life and nothing nobody could convince me anything other than that on social media there was a guy or somebody on there with a a, a name Tim's third term or uh, third term Tim and that's all they were pushing. That's all they were pushing. Nobody gonna tell me that that's not that wasn't his agenda. So there we go. If Timothy wanted a third term, he could go to Redonda and go get the third term if he want. Right now, uh, where he is is a manufacturer of his own. Is, is, is he manufactured that? And he must be satisfied with it. I'm sure he's not comfortable where he is now. All right, thank you. It was obvious the secondary last caller made mention that you can't tell what 
someone is going to do. But you could re read their body language and based on how they set up themselves and their supporters to harass people who seemingly are vying for their position. All these are learned men and women. And some of them try to hoodwink or fool others. Some of them try to hit you with the, and hide their hand behind their backs. But that, that didn't fool you, right? No. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Yeah, Mr. Bar, I want to make a final um, contribution. Um, what I think should have happened is that after the convention, when when the six um, gentlemen sent the letter or went to the governor general, I think that is what should have done. They did have to the convention because they claimed that they were trying to talk to the, um, the former prime minister prior to the convention, long before, as they claimed. They said, oh, you know, they were trying, 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 and he wasn't, you know, okay? No, you come and you, you know, you cuss him off. I think after cussing him off this Monday, they should have gone the Monday to the Governor General. Not weeks and weeks after and bringing a, 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 a letter of a list with 17 demands. Caller, might I ask you a question? Yes, Mr. Robert. So, if they had followed your suggestion of going to the Governor General the day after, you think what? No, well, you see, maybe the same, maybe the, they were to get the same results, you know, with, with what the Governor General says. Oh, right? okay. But the point I'm trying to make, So, right? so work with me. So, uh -huh. they might have got the same result, but the difference would have been they would have just been out sooner. Yes, of course. Okay. Or they should have resigned. I got you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. Yes. Thank you. You know, I find this whole thing fascinating, right? And from a number of standpoints, and one of it is, it's always good to hear the various views of persons. And these exchanges are good. For instance, as I listen to everybody talking about constitutional reform and everybody promised, that's why I just asked Naya to name one Prime Minister who never promised that. Good evening, thank you for holding. Yes, um, Weber, you know, the point you, you I hope, you, uh, I, I, you might have been going to make. Now, um, my good friend, Mr. McMahon, talk about having a constitutional conference. In 1997, two years after the Labour Party went back into power, they paid Dr. Philip, the former Governor General, Sir Fred Philip, yes. and another QC, enormous sums of money to review the Constitution and to make recommendations as to the changes we could make. I think I heard Mr. Stanley say he was inter interviewed. Other people made their inputs. Now to me it is this, um, I don't want you to do it, dishonest. But you ask the question, how many persons, how many have you heard say that they intend to amend it? Making it sound as if they have to do something from scratch. I don't understand that. You have it. I mean, you paid for it. The public was not even told of the output. It was not even put online so you could read it and say, well, I'll do this. You know, we want a conference. And by the way, for Mr. Lybird, um, some parts of the Constitution, in order to change it, requires um, a referendum. Mm -hmm. So it isn't, it isn't all two-thirds, eh? Yes, yes. But the people are disingenuous. We either 
You remember the clause, the Brian clause, 28? Remember that clause? Yeah, yeah. When they said it was done to keep Fitzroy Brian out of power. And they went in 1995 and up in 2015. Not a word out of it. Other parts that talk about um, who, who could do different things and so. We talk about, I mean, as I listened last night, the man said, you can promise anything, but you are not compelled. And I think that the politicians subscribe to it. You don't have to do what you say. You say you say it to make the people feel good. Well, they say there is a, an old adage in campaigning. Tell the people what they want to hear. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling you, because what the man said. He said, look, you don't have, you don't have to, to do anything you say. What you say, you make them feel good. You know? Yes. And we keep falling for it. We keep falling. Because, oh, when you listen to the priorities, I'm going to talk a little, little, little business here now. Now, we keep saying we want... Yeah, uh, we, we got only half a minute. Right, like we, we want good governance, right? You notice everything else become thing except that part? It, it did not mention in the first hundred years, there's, you know, integrity in public life, thing of information, you hear them and build, break down school and build up school. Nothing. I will keep falling for it time and time again. That's why I don't waste time arguing with some people. So, Mr. Lyman, don't raise your hopes, right? All right, then. Okay, thank you very much. That is... The last word. This program repeats tomorrow at 10 o'clock following the VON News Minute. Join the Honorable Mark Brantley tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock for On The Mark. Thank you all again for joining us. This is your voice in the community. Taught that get results. You all have a wonderful evening.